Hi guys, welcome to the structure of the skeletal muscle. So you need to be able to describe the gross and microscopic structure of a skeletal muscle, describe the ultra structure of the myofibril and explain how actin and myosin are arranged within a myofibril. So this is the specification that we will be looking at. So in this video, we are only looking at the structure of the skeletal muscle. So firstly, we will be looking at the neuromuscular junction because there uh, is a difference between the depolarization arriving at the mu uh, muscle and then obviously the another nerve cell. So the process is quite similar. So we've got the uh, presynaptic membrane. Inside of the presynaptic membrane, of course, we've got the vesicles that will contain acetylcholine, so not change. The adaptation, we've got lots of mitochondria in here, okay? But rather than having the postsynaptic membrane, we've got now the uh, myofibril membrane because the de depolarization will arrive to the myofibril, to the muscles. So what are the things that are really important here? We've got endoplasmic reticulum, which is called sarcoplasmic reticulum uh, in the myofibril. So we've got them. Uh, We've got the mitochondria, we've got the nucleus, and then we've got lots of different bands uh, and lines. So we will be looking at those in a second. So in terms of the differences, what are differences between neuromuscular junction and hologenic synapses? What we need to remember that neuromuscular junction is only the one that it's to uh, excite, okay? But with the synapses, energic synapses, so the one with acetylcholine, we can excite or we can inhibit the transmission. So they link neurons to muscles, here neurons to neurons or other organs. So within the neuromuscular uh, junction, we've got motor neurons that are involved. But in the synapse, holinergic synapse, we can have motor, sensory, and intermediate neurons. So action potential will end at the muscle, okay? But in terms of the uh, holinergic synapses, can be produced along another neuron, okay, to the postsynaptic neuron. So in terms of the acetylcholine, uh, what do they do? They bind to receptors on the membrane of the muscle fibers. But in the holinergic synapse, what you remember, they bind to receptors on the membrane of postsynaptic neuron. So those are the differences. But as I've said, the process won't be much different in terms of the depolarization. So what is actually the acetylcholine? How is it broken down? It's broken by enzyme acetylcholine esterase. Okay, why do we do it? To make sure that the muscle is not overstimulated. Because when you break it down to holine and acetyl, the holine and acetyl then will diffuse back into the neuron. Okay, and uh, recombine uh, for acetylcholine using, of course, ATP provided by mitochondria. We've seen there is lots of mitochondria, that's the adaptation to produce, for example, ATP, which will uh, be needed to recombine choline and ethanoic acid, so acetyl. So let's have a look at the filaments that you need to be aware of. So we've got the uh, myosin molecules. Myosin molecules are easy to recognize because they've got myosin head. We've got the actin filament, which are really thin. Okay, and around the actin filament, we've got another molecule which is wrapped around the actin filament, covering the binding sites for myosin head, and this molecule it's called tropomyosin. So if you then looking under the microscope at the arrangement of the actin and myosin, you will see like a thick and thin filaments. So thin filaments, it's actin, thick filaments. It's myosin. So what are the jobs of those? So actin, obviously, we say it's thinner. It, con uh, it consists of two strands twisted around. And what, that will allow myosin to function properly in terms of this uh, filament sliding mechanism. So that will allow the production of the uh, actin-myosin cross bridges. Myosin is then the thicker one. So as you can see, 
it will consist of long rod shaped tails with, with the head that will project to the slide. So the head of myosin will bind to actin and will move, will cause this slide mechanism. But also myosin can deattach from actin and reset. So bring it back to the original position using ATP. And finally, we've got, sorry, this is a mistake here, tropo, tropomyosin. So those are the fibers that are around the actin filaments that are wrapped around. When they're going to move, they're going to move in that moment when we've got calcium ions present. And they, if, once they moved, they will allow myosin to bind to actin. So let's have a look now at the uh, more structures. So we will start with the sarcomere. So sarcomere is this single unit here, okay? And we'll uh, be uh, in, within sarcomere, we will see myosin filaments, which of course are thicker, and actin filaments in between, which are thinner. So what is the sarcomere? So sarcomere is a distance between the Z lines, okay? What does actually sarcomere uh, it's needed for? It's needed to uh, provide the evidence for the sliding filament mechanism. Because what will happen when the muscle will contract, the Z lines okay, are going to get narrow, so they're going to come together. So let's have a look actually now. What are the parts of the sarcomere? What are they called? So this is the sarcomere and the We've got the area here that has uh, only uh, actin filaments. So this, okay, when we've got only actin filaments, we call eye band. So that will appear light or under the microscope because it's only actin. So we're looking then further. We've got now those overlaps, okay? So remember, eye band, it's without overlaps, actin only. But then we've got the A band. So A band, okay, will appear dark on the uh, under the microscope because it contains myosin, the whole length of the myosin, including any overlaps with actin. So that's A band. Looking further, what is then the section that only includes myosin? It's called H zone. So H zone, it's only the section where we're going to see myosin on its own. Right, so what's left? Okay, Z lines. So we've got Z lines. Okay, so, so those are the, uh, the, uh, the positions where we call the section a uh, sarcomere. But also what you can tell, the Z line is actually the middle of the I band. What was the I band? I band was the section of actin only okay so that line the uh, the uh, obviously direction where the sarcometer starts and ends but also it's the center of i band okay so what how can we then see this all under the microscope again so remember thin filaments there are actins the thicker filaments are myosins with the heads so this is what we will see okay when the muscle relax so they are going to look like this okay and that's the position under the uh, microscope so when the muscle re, uh, relaxes we will see only actin filaments because that's where you're going to chop in the position x and y as you can see here so if you're chopping this there to look on the microscope you don't have any overlaps you only have actin but when the muscle contract what we've said the Z lines, so that was our Z line, they come in closer. So if they come in closer, obviously, the myosin, it's not going to change. But what will change then is the fact that we're going to have more overlaps between actin and myosin because they're coming closer. So if we're chopping still at the same position away from the Z line, under the microscope, we're going to see both thick filaments, so myosin, and thin filaments are active. So this is the uh, mechanism of the muscle contraction. So to show you again how they actually can do it. So the myosin head is going to attach to the actin, slide this, okay, 
towards the inside